welcome to this video from in 28 minutes thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms udemy safari and pact let's welcome our lead instructor rangarao karanam one of the things which we believe at in 28 minutes is great programmers write great unit tests and that's why we are bringing you this video to you in which we are highlighting some of the most important unit test frameworks there are. We would be talking about wide variety of unit test frameworks in the Java world. We would be talking about JUnit, Mockito, PowerMock, AssertJS, Hamcrest. We would be talking about Spring Unit and JSON Assert and JSON Path as well. We would be looking at a couple of examples with these frameworks as well as we would be looking at what is the role that each of these frameworks might be playing in your specific unit test. Let's start with the basics, right? JUnit or TestNG. Whenever I write a unit test, what am I trying to do? I want to execute some piece of code and I would want to check the output. So I would want to be able to have the basic framework where I would be able to run a lot of tests like that and check the output. And that's what the JUnit framework provides. The JUnit framework provides basic ways where you can say this is the test I would want to run. I would want to execute this method and I would want to check whether the output is this. JUnit framework provides a number of different kinds of asserts. Assert equals, assert false. At test indicates that this is a method containing the test. We can say I would want to pass an input ABCD and check whether it's false. So we are passing ABCD and checking it's false. We are writing tests for other scenarios as well. A, B, A, B and checking whether it's true. A, B and checking whether it's true and A and false. So for these kind of scenarios, JUnit also supports something called parameterized tests. Now, the other alternative framework for writing unit tests is TestNG. TestNG makes it even more easier to write customized tests. So let's say I have my test data input and output in a spreadsheet or XML or things like that, test ng makes it easy to connect to them, get the test data and write tests around them. So at a high level, JUnit and test ng are the basic frameworks which enable you to write tests and check the results. If a test fails, you would see a red bar. If a test passes, you would see a green bar. All that kind of features are basically what are built on top of this basic unit testing frameworks. Now, is it enough if I have a unit testing framework? Nope. When I test classes, I would want to mock or stub dependencies. That's where the mocking frameworks come in. Let's take this example. The Sum Business IMPL depends on the data which comes back from the data service. And to be able to write a good unit test for this, I would want to be able to mock this out and Mockito enables us to do that. Mockito provides methods to mock the data service and you can inject the mock into the business service and write a unit test to it. Mockito also provides great annotations to do the injection automatically. So you can do things like at mock, at inject mocks and use a specific runner so that all the code like this where you are actually creating a mock and injecting it in, you don't really need to do that. That is automatically taken care of by the Mockito framework. And all that you can focus on is writing code like when this method is called, then return this. So what we are doing is doing a mock and then checking whether the business logic is working fine. We are passing this data 24, 15, 3 and checking whether the greatest is 24. When I get the greatest is 24, that means this code which we wrote down here to check the greatest from all the data is working. The example which we are looking at is quite a simple one, but typically when you talk about business logic in applications, it would be much, much more complex. So that's where mock ito comes into picture. You don't want your tests to have external dependencies. You'd want to mock out external dependencies and write stable tests. Mockito enables you to write great unit tests using mocking. Easy mock is an alternative for writing unit tests with mocking. And there are a lot of developers out there who love easy mock, but for me, Mockito is the preferred mocking framework. Now, what is PowerMock? PowerMock is all about the situations 
where you cannot inject the mocks in. Let's say you have static methods, you have constructors, you have private methods. How do you mock all those out? Mockito allows you to write tests when the design is good. It says, I don't want to worry about the cases where the design is bad. And that's where power mock comes into picture. So there is a specific class called some class with a static method and I would want to mock it out. So I would want to test this method, but I would want to mock this specific call out. In that kind of situation, we can use power mock. So over here, what we are doing is writing the code which allows us to mock out a static method. You can also mock a constructor using power mock. You are looking at code in here where we are mocking the constructor of array list class. So we are saying power, power mock it to when new. So when a constructor is called, then return the mock list. Power mock can also be used to mock private methods. The private method cannot be called directly and mocked. So what we are doing is we are using something called a white box or invoke method and passing a string with the private method name. So power mock is more for scenarios where you have bad design, you have static methods, private methods which you'd want to test, constructors which you'd want to mock, and in those kind of situations, you would go for power mock. Whenever we write tests, you want to have great assertions, and that's where assertj and hamcrest come into picture. Let's say I have an array list which is coming back as a result from a method call, and I would want to check on it. SRJ helps us to write great asserts. You can see how easy it is. You can do assert that numbers has size 3 and you can write multiple assertions. So here I'm saying assert that numbers has size 3, it contains 12 and 15 and every assertion in here match this. Every assertion has x greater than 10. If you're familiar with lambda expressions, I'm creating a method which says every x here is greater than 10. Every x here is less than 10. Every number is less than 10 and none of the numbers are less than zero. So this is what assertj allows us to do. It allows us to write great assertions. And hamcrest matches is another way to write assertions as well. You can see assert that numbers comma has size, has items, every item greater than 10, every item less than 10. I think hamcrest and assertj are equally great. But over a period of time, I started liking SRJ even more because you can write multiple tests and the tests are much more readable. Hamcrest, I'm passing two parameters, data and the test. However, with SRJ, it's almost more readable. I'm saying assert that this has size three. Instead of saying assert that numbers comma has size three, SRJ structure is assert that numbers dot has size 3. I kind of have a preference to this kind of a structure. So SRJ and Hamcrest are great frameworks that allow us to write great assertions. Now, the next important frameworks in here are the spring unit related frameworks. When I develop applications, I would want to be able to write unit tests for the web layer. I would want to be writing unit tests for the data layer. And to be able to do that, I would want to be able to launch a Spring context and be able to mock a few things out. Whenever we want to write a test for the web layer, Spring mock MVC is a great option. Whenever we want to write a test for the data layer, Spring data JPA is a right option. And whenever you want to write some test where you'd want to launch a, a Spring context, you can use something called a Spring runner and a combination of something called uh, at mock bean to mock specific things out. In this example, we are actually writing a unit test which is using the Spring unit test framework and the Spring mock MVC framework as well. If you look at it, we are saying at run with Spring runner dot class. What we are doing in here is launching up a Spring context and inside the context, we would want to use a mock bean. So we would want to mock this out and we would want to use the controller and wire it with the mock of this business service. The other thing which we are trying to do in here is use the mock MVC framework. The mock MVC framework is an awesome thing to be able to execute requests. Whenever you're doing REST services or whenever you're developing a web application, you'd want to send a request to a specific URL. 
the mock MVC framework allows us to do that. You can see that over here, we are executing a request. We are saying mock MVC, execute the request to dummy item. Make sure that we are sending an accept of application JSON. After you perform the request, check that the status is okay and the content contains a JSON of this kind. So what we are doing is we are executing a REST API and checking the response whether it's fine. You can see over here in the specific test that we are also mocking the business service. So we are saying business service, when retrieve all items is called, return this set of items. And what we are doing in here is we are executing the request and checking whether the JSON exactly matches what's coming back. So this test is a combination of using mocking, that's at mock bean, and a combination of executing mock MVC. So we are executing the request and checking whether the status is fine. The other kinds of tests are add J data JPA test. In add data JPA test, you're trying to test your repositories. You are checking, you're using an in-memory database and writing unit tests with the data that is present inside the in-memory database. So with features like add mock bean, spring runner dot class, being able to write mock MVC tests, being able to write data JPA tests, which execute against an in-memory database, Spring Unit makes it easy to write unit tests for varied range of scenarios. The last frameworks that we would want to talk about are JSON Assert and JSON Path. Whenever we talk about REST APIs, what is the output, what is the input? We'd be talking about always JSON. When you get a JSON output, you'd want to check for specific things in the JSON whether this contains this data in this format, whether it contains this data with this value, all that is possible through JSON assert and JSON path frameworks. Let's start with looking at JSON assert. So let's say this is the actual response which is coming back from a service. What JSON assert allows us to do is to check specific parts of the request that we are interested in. If you look at this specific thing, I'm only checking for three. I'm checking for ID, name, and price. I'm not specifying the quantity. So I can check either a subset of these things. The other thing is you can also specify the check without escape characters. Here I'm saying ID one, name ball and price 10. So this is much more easier thing to read. So I can use this to assert it against the actual response. So even if the actual response is in a different format, the position of the elements varies. It just checks if there's an ID element with a value one, name with value ball and price with 10. So this makes it easy to write tests. This mode of comparing responses is called strict false. You can also do a strict mode where you can specify everything that you would want to compare. So you'd want to make sure that ID is one, name is ball, price is 10 and also quantity is 100. And if any of those is missing, the test should fail. That mode is called strict true, where you check for everything in the response. So JSON assert allows us to write asserts in a very simple way. So you can specify the format of the request in the way you'd want to check. You only specify the important ones you'd want to check and you can make the strict mode as false and you can use it to assert. The other, cut, cut, cut. The other approach to asserting is using the JSON path framework. You might want to check for specific things in the response, you want to check that there are three elements in the response. Over here, we are using JSON path. Just like XPath is used to query XML, JSON path is used to query JSON. So over here, we are saying dollar dot $length, which gets how many elements are there. So there are three elements. So I'll check that it is three. I would want to check all IDs. So I'm taking all the IDs and I'm checking the whether they are 10,000, 10,001 and 10,002. So I'm getting the IDs and checking them. Or I can actually try and get the first two elements or I can get the first element alone or I can query to see, do I have an element of the name as a racer? Do I have any element with quantity is equal to five? So there are wide varieties of tests that you can write using JSON path as well. In this video, we looked at a wide variety of unit testing frameworks that are present in the Java world. We started with the basic unit testing framework, JUnit, and its alternative test, NG. We looked at how you can do mocking with Mockito, and we talked about the alternative, which is easy mock. We talked about power mock, which allows us to mock static methods, we mock constructors, mock private methods. 
We talked about assert J and Hamcrest, which allow us to write easy asserts on lists or things like that. We talked about Spring Unit Testing Framework, which allows us to write great tests for Spring MVC controllers to your repositories and also for scenarios where you'd want to launch a Spring context and mock something out. And at the end, we looked at JSON assert and the JSON path frameworks, which allows us to write J cut, 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 which allow us to write asserts against JSON responses. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online, and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python, and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular, and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.